welcome back to my channel. Today we're playing some more Pirate Warriors 4, continuing with the new DLC. Uh, we're going to be checking out Shanks today. So far, what I've played with him, he's been very good. He seems very strong. And uh, overall, he's pretty fun. I also like that his taunt is his Conqueror's Walk. Uh, it's from uh, when he's on Whitebeard's ship, but it was a move in Pirate Warriors 3. And now it's his taunt, and it actually does still do damage. Like, it is not super usable, because it doesn't do a ton of damage or anything, but it is possible to use in combos, and it looks pretty damn cool. But, uh, we'll go over his, uh, special moves and his combos, and then, uh, continue in this map. First off, this is the taunt. And then we'll go into the square triangle. And then two squares into a triangle, three squares into a triangle, four squares into a triangle, five squares into a triangle, six squares into a triangle, seven into a triangle. and then 8 square attacks. And this 8 square attacks will also break guards, so it's very good. And then this is our smash attack, and then midair smash attack. And then 1 square midair into a triangle, 2 squares into a triangle midair, 3 squares into a triangle midair, 4 squares into a triangle, And then five squares midair. And then this is his first super attack. He lights his sword on fire and then does a cross attack forward. And then we just got this one. It's just a general like slash forward with hockey. And then we got this one which is kind of like a vortex. Pulls a bit in and then smashes out. And then we got a big wide area slash. And this I think is his most damaging one. Does a big beam forward. And then this is his Conqueror's Hockey, which I think looks really cool. I like how it animates putting his sword away and stuff. And then this move is also very good. It, uh, like, vortexes them, holds him in that spot, and then does one big slash. And then we got his Full Force Burst, which also activates his, like, longer, uh, hockey sword. But overall, Shanks is very good. And he doesn't have, like ton to him he is also speed type that's why his combos are like so long they go up to eight squares but he also has a thing where when you attack and then like start up your next combo after ending it instead of like doing a combo ender he like teleports to the enemy so you can keep comboing very easily with him and uh i can't tell i think he feels stronger than old shanks but the old shanks is also very good I like the special attacks on this one though, it's uh, a bit more unique and uh, not just uh, giant like red slash attacks. Some of them are that, but we also have I think something hawk, like that blue slash attack. I like that one, and I like the one where it like vortexes them all up and then slashes them away. Plus he has a new animation for his uh, Conqueror's Hockey, I'm pretty sure, which is always nice. And so far I've had fun mixing around his combos, it, fe it feels like it flows very well. And just having, I think he has two or three attacks that have breaks, but I found like the pure, like the eight square attacks works very well. And just, you can basically play this character by just spamming square, and you can probably beat most levels like that. Which, this game isn't hard in the first place, but... It is what it is. It was, he's probably good for grinding. I still have Kobe to try. But I'm guessing Shanks will probably be the strongest character. But you never know. Kobe could be pretty good. I've seen a lot of people complaining about Uta though. And uh, how she's kind of a slow character. And she has low damage. But for a technical character. She's still on the higher side of damage. It's 
Also not something I generally care about in this type of game as much. It's just how the combos look and how they feel to play. And to me, Uta feels very nice. And so does Shanks. But I was expecting Shanks to be good. And also generally fairly simple of a character. Where you basically are just spamming and have really good uh, like attacks. So, so far still I think Uta is my favorite of the two I've played. But Shanks is pretty awesome. And he is pretty flashy. Like a lot of his moves look good. I like that one a lot. I like this. It doesn't seem very strong so far, unless I just haven't figured out how to use it properly. But that uh, fire cross move looks very cool as well. Which always is. I'm so interested if we'll ever get a proper answer. But I feel like fire in One Piece is like the easiest uh, like power up to get, and like it's not really ever explained how the hell it's possible. I feel like people can just use hockey to cause fire attacks. I feel like that is something that's going to come into play at one point. And I feel like that's what Kiamon does. Because it's... I don't think it's ever explained how the fuck Kiamon has fire abilities. And like, you even see him like light his blade up and then use it uh, to sear uh, Kiku's uh, arm to uh, uh, cauterize it. I can't think of the word. But I... It just seems like either by moving fast or some people can just cause it by not even moving fast. Like, I'm not sure if, uh, like, Zoro in Thriller Bark, if his fire attack was caused by speed or how he did it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's One Piece, and, like, I don't really give a shit. Like, it's a power up, it looks cool roll of cool pretty much but like even people like uh, I think it's Hannibal in uh what's it called Impel Down he could uh cause fire by spinning and then I think uh Black Maria's fire weapon was because of someone's like devil fruit that was hooked onto it or something I don't remember exactly how it worked but she had like a person on it but it's just interesting how uh, Oda uses fire as a power-up. And I mean, Sanji's been doing it since Eni's lobby by just spinning. And he doesn't even have to do that anymore. He just uh, can cause it by, like, powering up, basically. Sanji's power-up in Wano was pretty badass, though, when he got the blue flames. I really liked how they uh, animated that. I feel like it kind of didn't get too much showcase because we immediately after got Zoro's fight and its animation was like so crazy because it seems like Toei, uh, Toei absolutely loves uh, Zoro. Even on the new episode they were like gassing him up so much the way uh, he was acting and just uh, did his attack on uh, just with the big warm Eddie. It was just very extra and very badass. I'm not complaining. I do love my Zoro uh, content. It just feels bad for Sanji fans sometimes, I feel. He does not get uh, quite the spotlight. But doesn't bother me personally. I feel like, honestly, a lot of the Straw Hats are backseat most of the time now. Which is just, I mean, how it's hard to write... Uh, so many like main characters in a story where like every arc is basically a new story and new characters that you have to tell their story as well it becomes a bit difficult to like relate everyone to the plot but it is one of the downsides of uh the late one piece is i feel like the crew hasn't been uh, quite as closely knitted and stuff but i feel like we did get some moments during one of the crew actually working together at least and being together and then on the newest episode when they were working together on the ship it was very awesome it felt like almost pre-time skip uh, one piece which is always nice but uh i've never really been one of the people that like prefers pre-time skip i have i kind of like what uh oda has done to the world since uh the time skip but I know some people aren't a super fan of it and prefer how it was uh, 
back in the day. And to each their own. I mean, it is whatever. I mean, that's how I am for uh, Dragon Ball. I much prefer like the original series and like the earlier of the manga. And I feel like it uh, was continually going downfall in some ways. Although, I'm also one of the people that really like the Boo Saga. Because to me, it felt like going back to the roots of Dragon Ball. It just didn't, it doesn't work as well with the series continuing and not ending at that point. Because it introduced a lot of like the stuff that makes Super what it is today. And like a lot of like the power up and, and like transformations constantly. I feel like it's kind of come from the Boo Saga. And kind of abusing transformations, giving it to a bunch of characters, and like having so many different power ups in the same arc. Whereas before it was usually just one power up at like the very end of the arc. I also find sometimes going back, like after you catch up to a series and you like look back, the earlier parts are like better than you remember. Because when I was watching One Piece, like I, I liked it when I was watching it again, but, like, I didn't really get into it. I think about Skypea is the arc where I was like, oh, man, I love this series. And it started to really like the crew and everything that was going on with the world. Maybe a bit near Alabasta, because that's when we start finding about the, like, Poneglyphs and stuff like that. But earlier One Piece now, I really love. And I love, like, a lot of the stupid jokes and stuff like that that, like, I didn't really care about. And there's also a lot of, like, foreshadowing early on that you can see going back to it that you might have missed. So a lot of the arcs are actually better than I, uh, the first time I watched it. So in that sense, I do get how some people kind of miss that. Because when you're thinking back to the old arcs, they're often even better than the first time you watched it. I'm excited to start some, uh, new long shows, like, uh... I think Fist of the North Star I'm going to watch soon. Um, well, I mean soon, but it's going to be a while. And then I want to finish, uh, or not finish, I want to watch Saint Seiya. And I also have Gintama. But I'm trying to watch like a lot of older shows that I've never seen before, before I watch Gintama. So I can like get a lot of references and stuff that I might not have. But I mean, I've watched so much anime that I'll probably get more references than the average person. But I just still like, there's an order to my brain how I like doing things, so it's kind of how I go through it. But I'm excited to get back to a longer series, but for all these next couple weeks, I gotta catch up with all the weekly shit that's all airing. I've just been focusing on that since I finished Fairy Tale. And then, it's like, I gotta watch, catch up on Blue Exorcist. Just too much anime to watch. Too much shit coming out, but this is pretty much be the end of this video. I'm really excited for this DLC. I'm really loving the characters, and I'll have a Kobe video probably tomorrow sometime. But that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.